Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Madeline. Look at this new shirt that I got. It is literally so silky and smooth. My mother got it for me. My mumsies. Got my little water here with me. Let's be honest for like five seconds. I mean, how many of us have struggled with just being motivated and going back to school and just staying on top of our work, whether that be online, asynchronous, in person, or even a hybrid class? Nevertheless, we are going to make 2024 your best academic year. Yeah. And this is coming from somebody that has always been in the bottom of her class. Okay. I didn't get these grades before. Never did. Start off, I am very slow. I am a slow learner. I've had people tell me like, no, you're not slow. No, don't say that you're slow. You just don't apply yourself true about the not applying myself but even when I do apply myself it still takes me longer than the average student so I am slow uh, if you are like me you are going to enjoy this video because I'm going to be showing you tips and tricks on how I evolve my grades from this to this we've had four semesters in a row of all A's yes all A's and I'm here to show you how this is going to be your student success guide <laughs> Number one, get excited and invest in yourself. Now, when I say get excited, I know you're probably thinking like, what, what does this mean? I'm very big on my stationery. I love making colored notes. I don't actually have an iPad, which I would love to have at one point, probably save up for it in the near future, just to kind of have, I do love having the laptop there just when I'm doing papers, but I think having just like the pen and the iPad Pro or a mini iPad is pretty great because it's a digital one. So you can really highlight and you don't necessarily need to buy colors, but if you're somebody that doesn't really like the digital version, I highly, highly suggest that you invest in that. I've gone and created a clip of the what you do not want to do. Now, if you already have these bad habits, you may already be like, look, I'm comfortable with it. You can really go either or with this. What you don't want to do is use any old line paper. You don't want to use any notebooks that probably already have previous classes that have scribbles. You're not trying to find the first pen that you can find in your bag or in your home and then figure out that it doesn't even work. I mean, something that I used to do at the beginning was I was excited and I would have my pens and my stuff and all, all the goodies like that. And then as soon as I started to invest in more colors, like the midliners and the sharpies, is I started to feel a little bit more motivated because I got to control like my color coding. Aside from that, I love customizing my notes because sometimes I feel like when I was in, you know, elementary school and middle school, elementary, you know, it was always like a number two pencil or like a black or, you know, blue pen. And it was very plain, you know, I wanted my notes to stand out as much as possible. So whether you're somebody that is more digital or more manual, I highly suggest that you start investing in yourself. Let's say you're like me, you don't have that kind of money to get an iPad. This is what you want to do. Buy either the midliners. These are probably my absolute go to and I get these at either typo staples I mean you can literally find them anywhere I mean, in a sense find pens that you love I also actually really really love the very fine thin point I'm talking really really skinny pens like point three I usually have to order these online or you can even find them at like Daiso or Tokyo Central so just keeping in mind that you know you want to start investing in your work I know that I just feel so much different and I feel so much more motivated when I actually do apply myself when I do apply my notes because how difficult can it be to review your note and it's just bland I feel like with color you can go ahead and highlight what's important or you know change for topic creating your own little combo so that way it stands out a while back I started taking time in the mornings where I would dedicate to just learning a little bit of calligraphy to really emphasize all my notes and really just level them up and maybe this is something that you've been wanting to do I highly suggest you do it now I know some people are gonna say that I, I prefer using like the, the loose line paper and binder cool do that but make sure that you're having like a fresh slate so remove those old notes whether you staple them save them for later but don't reuse them if that makes sense but the pens if you just like having a plain black pen cool as long as like longevity purposes that are but more suitable for you you don't have to do this it's just my preference but for some reason this helps my brain feel like oh i'm excited i'm gonna take notes and it really does make all the difference I'm in my purse. okay that's fine i am i'm in with i don't like doing that shampoo my hands are full dry Point. Yeah, it's cute. Where are you going? Okay, back to what I was saying. So, midliners are great, sharpies, really precise pens like 0 0.5, 0 0.3. It just makes your notes look so much nicer. Prefer the ballpoint, roll with that as well. Your stationery makes all the difference. I promise you that. This one is for all of my procrastinators. I'm talking to you. I know for myself, I procrastinate like every other day on anything. It could be homework. It could be cleaning. It could be just taking care of myself. Simple things like that. I am lazy and it just happens, you know, and that's okay. I validate that to an extent. You know what I'm saying? We still have to stay on top of our stuff. So make sure it's not becoming a very bad habit. Stay. This really goes with saying that you really do have to dedicate time and you have to create a sustainable schedule where you know that you have to stay on top of your things. Don't procrastinate and stay active. So, you know, whatever software that you're using for your school, whether that be Canvas or maybe you use something else, if that's you, keep updated with what is due, whether that be a printed form, you write in a calendar, just making sure that you're staying active with all of the stuff that you do. So a habit that I've incorporated into my everyday routine is making sure that the moment that I get assigned homework, I write it down somewhere, whether that be in a little agenda, 
Agenda or again digitally on Google Keep that's free you don't have to pay for it things that are easy put it in your calendar on your phone set a reminder these are things that are so necessary because it's going to save us in the long run I am so forgetful I am like Dory you tell me something it's going to go through one ear and out the other and trust me you're going to have to tell me four times because every now and then I'm just kind of like ah, ah, ah. you know it's just I mean, you got to make it a force of habit in that sense so making sure that you're staying updated with all of your classes and your classwork this goes with homework assignments quizzes exams papers whatever that may be stay on top of it and always be aware something that I used to do when I was in high school as well as when I was in college was I would get into this habit of just leaving my you know work and my backpack stuff and even in my brain I would watch well, write this down because I'm gonna forget it and I'd keep that note but I would forget the date I would just think oh yeah I have an exam I'd roll into class they'd be like okay everybody take your pens and pencils out we're gonna be in the exam what exam the exam that was supposed to be next week it is next week that would always screw me up staying active don't procrastinate write that down put it in Google Keep write it down on your calendar get a cute little agenda again going with the stationery don't fall behind number three study 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 i cannot stress that one enough if you're somebody that just procrastinates till the night before i do too or the day of maybe you're a really great test taker for me because i am a slow learner i have horrific testing anxiety you guys saw the board games in the closet did we give them all away mom would have them oh shit. the lying actually willis i'm in the middle of recording so when I say study, 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 I mean don't do it last minute and then try to slam it out. Keeping in mind, chisel away at it. Now I'm not saying that you have to study, you know, entirely all that time, but what you don't want to do is wing it. I actually made it a habit to submit my work a day early to trick my brain. So if something was due on Friday, I said that it was due on Thursday. I still had that extra time, but maybe you're like, no, I'll, I'll still end up submitting it on Friday. That's okay. It needs to become a habit. Another thing that you can do when it comes to studying, go on Quizlet. You don't have to create a Quizlet unless that you want to dedicate that time. I guarantee you there are nine times out of ten, another student that took that class at your university or school or wherever you are has already taken that class and created a Quizlet. It's already done for you. And Quizlet is free for the most part. I know that premium allows you to do other things to an extent, but I don't actually know because I've never actually paid. Do what's free. Unless you want to create your own Quizlet, then go for it just because you feel like you know the material better. Again, nine times out of 10, the Quizlet is already done for you and all you have to do is just study. Next thing that you can do is highlight words or phrases, and this is while you're taking notes in class. So whether you be in class, during lecture, highlight important things that you know your professor mentions especially. I took communications last semester, and every time that my professor would lecture, he always would say things like, this is going to be on the quiz. Again, nine times out of ten, your professor will always give you or drop you little hints of what's going to be on the exam or the quiz. Sometimes they even throw in answers like, hey, this is going to be an answer for one of your questions on your midterm or your final. Highlight that circle it, start, whatever helps you. Lastly, it's going to be utilizing office hours. Now, this is probably going to be more applicable to anybody in university versus somebody in high school. Uh, for my high school, we actually did have office hours because it was more of a college prep high school, so it was a lot more advanced. In that sense, I know some people don't necessarily like going. You don't have office hours, maybe email your teacher and start building that relationship and trying to dedicate time to a site. Even if it's like five, ten minutes before school, maybe during break, during lunch, after school, whatever it may be, do that because a lot of the times your professor at least for me in the past anytime that I put myself out there and I reach out to my professor and I would say hey I would love to touch base on chapter da 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 I didn't understand this and always have specific questions before you go in there don't just say I'm confused on this that's very vague and if you only have 15 minutes with your professor scheduling the appointment at least in college you want to utilize that time maybe come with two or three questions let them explain it lastly would be to create a study group make friends on the first day of class try to introduce yourself I always look for people in the first row because I already know that they're sitting in the front for a reason versus the people in the background <laughs> that would be me although last no summer semester I volunteered as note taker for like extra credit so I was slapped right in the front always try to make friends even if it's with a partner just create some kind of study group if your school has resources like tutors that as well because paying for a tutor is just ridiculous especially in this economy that we live in so to pay for a tutor when you already have one at school for free utilize that as well dedicating more time to my education I started to realize a huge shift in how I felt and in my confidence even if I feel like it's, it's a stupid question or he said it like 50 million times I'm gonna ask again yeah I'm gonna ask again and I'm gonna verify that that's the right answer I don't care moving on to number four this one is so crucial and I think that this was the biggest thing and again I cannot stress this enough take care of yourself if you're not taking care of yourself I get it you need to take care of your health especially this is eating drinking water staying hydrated sleeping eight hours if you can fit that in because a lot of the times when we neglect that of course our bodies can't move if we're not taking care of ourselves we're function it's a function our body's a function if we don't provide it with the necessary nutrition and needs when I was working 40 to 50 hours at my previous job and it was a lot I was always 
tired and I had very poor eating habits and put it this way when I would wake up I would wake up very early I would have coffee drink my water I wouldn't eat my first meal to my first break which was around 1 or 2 p.m if I was closing and if it was a meal it was like hot Cheetos some leftover hot Cheetos that I found during lunch I would buy food because it was easier than you know making food at home and it tastes better right Panda Express Chipotle whatever they had at the food court obviously that's not healthy and on top of everything else I was sleeping maybe four or five hours because I was struggling to fall asleep I was always getting migraines I was constantly dehydrated because I wasn't drinking water because I was drinking things like energy drink I was tired all the time so I didn't feel like I was giving my best work that's another thing you can't be your best if you're not feeling your best so keep that in mind including in the whole taking care of yourself take many breaks so whether that be taking a break from cleaning studying doing homework whatever that is take a break for yourself this can be something as simple as just taking a five minute break during a study slam session or maybe you needed an extra 30 minutes of sleep give that to yourself maybe you're feeling like I'm gonna take a walk today take that walk keep a flask I know everybody at some point or another already has gotten a family I'm a hydro flask girly okay I'm not carrying that big old thing around oh man no shade, no hate to anybody that does have a Stanley, but I'm not carrying that thing around. This is already heavy for me and I get irritated. You can have a water bottle, maybe you have a hydro flask, have something to have water with you at all times. Even if it's keeping like a mini water bottle in your bag, have emergency water in your car, stay hydrated because that's gonna be the biggest factor in taking care of your body as well. Don't live off energy drinks or even just caffeine for that matter. I did this a lot when I was working and when I was trying to go to school at the same time, I was birds out. So I needed energy energy all the time. I was trying to substitute sleep with caffeine. So when I was getting headaches and I felt, you know, bloated and I was having, you know, bowel issues. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I had issues with my stomach. Okay. Hot girls got stomach problems. What about it? I mean, try to incorporate that. I'm not saying cut out the junk food and still have that balance, but of course, make sure you're not substituting your daily meals. I'm talking your three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a bag of hot Cheetos like me. Or maybe you're just limiting yourself to one meal a day. My mom, after my doctor's appointment, as I mentioned on my podcast, I bring that up all the time but yeah please subscribe check it out we would go to trader joe's she buys me like little jicama sticks carrots i love apples the little pouches she had got this seaweed it was like a little seaweed cracker of some sort it was like crunchy but it was really great of course everybody knows trader joe's has the best snacks has the best food meals and it's probably the most affordable than buying something at a normal grocery store not saying trader joe's ain't normal keeping that in mind just incorporate those little daily snacks especially if you're somebody that's trying to break out of those habits i noticed that my body was still wanting really salt foods I was having caffeine withdrawals find out later was that because I was so dependent on energy drink I was having major withdrawals so I limit myself to only having a cup of coffee one day before it was horrible I was drinking probably a Red Bull a coffee I'd get like a latte a coffee bean or like e-bar it's a Nordstrom cafe just to stay awake every other hour and it was so bad because when I would get home I, I would struggle to go to sleep or fall asleep because my body wants to keep moving even though I was tired it was messing with my health so find snacks that you love whether that be little fruits and veggies maybe like granola bars include that instead so even if you can't get a meal in there maybe think about buying protein shakes you know trying little snacks here and there because as long as you're incorporating some kind of meal that's not just like an unnutritious meal you're taking those steps to do it so making that a habit as well i really enjoy carrots i love the wingstop branch but i'm lactose so finding substitutes like lactose greek yogurt and then making it more low calories i like like alternatives for like mayo and just creating your own ranch because for me I can't have bottled ranch I don't like it I hate it I know for myself I still to this day struggle with eating really good but for the most part I have been eating better and I feel better and it's great because I notice I don't feel sluggish after I'm eating when I used to eat really poorly like the panda I mean I would always get the extra chow mein the egg rolls I felt like crap, absolute poop and I look the way I feel I promise you that I really did as I mentioned taking those breaks right you need that it is so essential so set a sleep routine a schedule Schedule. something that I used to do a lot of the times was I would struggle with falling asleep like when I would come back from school or work and I was just tired I would just throw my bag on the ground throw it on the desk and fall asleep that or I would be scrolling on social media for hours talking about how be living my best life again keeping in mind you have to take those breaks don't take any more than a five minute break I mean there have been times where I have had to put my phone on do not disturb just so that I could focus sometimes I'll put my phone away I'll throw it on my bed I try not to because what will happen is I will be on there for five minutes here 
the alarm, hit it like snooze, except I'm awake and never go back to my assignment. And really incorporating that chiseling away for your assignments means that you have less and less work. Don't try to complete it all in one day. The whole point of you doing it early and getting ahead is so that way you have less work to do. It makes the biggest difference because then by the end of it, you're not dreading about submitting it. You're feeling confident and then it's just about finalizing it before you submit it. Lastly, this is the reward system. So obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. Many of us probably already know you want to be able to reward yourself after, you know, completing an assignment, taking a test, doing an exam, especially if it's like the little things. You know how when you were a kid and you got a shot or you went to the doctor's office, you got like a sticker or you got like ice cream or I don't know, maybe you got McDonald's. You know what I mean? You always got some kind of reward for doing something that was really hard. Even as an adult, we still need that reward system in place for us because at the end of the day even though we're not kids we have to take care of ourselves maybe reward for you could be like okay i finished finals i finished you know my class i'm just waiting for my grade i'm feeling really confident maybe you're somebody that likes to buy yourself things like more like maybe you like to buy shoes or maybe you like vinyls or maybe you like you know makeup whatever that may be maybe you have been saving up to buy something and you need a reason you know let that be a reason now for smaller things like homework or quizzes sometimes i'll give myself like a self-care day or sometimes i'll you know hang out with julia and we'll get wingstop or we get coffee bean like that's me and jules thing like we always get coffee bean getting yourself a beverage getting yourself a sweet treat you know buying yourself your favorite chips whatever that is reward yourself because you did what you needed to do and that's all that matters something that i wouldn't do before is i wouldn't validate that oh yeah i did my homework okay um that's what i was supposed to do of course you're supposed to do it but i think for anybody that struggles just with completing academics, tricking your brain into being like, okay, well, if I do this, then I'll give myself this. I know it's terrible. It really does make the difference. Like, I think there was one time I had a history paper due and I had been stressing over it for like the longest time. I told myself that if I completed by this day and I, you know, get it reviewed and all that, I said that I was going to take myself and get my favorite food, which is fine. And I did. And it was great because it was the best reward. I felt one release because the assignment was done and turned in and I knew that I did my best work and the stress was gone. And two, I was enjoying a nice bowl of fun. So let me remind you that even if you feel like you didn't do enough or you're already bashing yourself and you feel like you don't deserve an award, award yourself anyway. You deserve to treat yourself. So keeping in mind the reward system. Alrighty, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy as usual. I hope that you're able to take everything that I have said and incorporate it into the future. Um, I hope that you are using this to make your academic year successful. Even if you're somebody that's thinking about going back to school or is already in school and maybe you've been in the same predicament as me where you just kind of feel stuck, let this be your sign to start taking it more seriously. And I don't think that these are big changes that you have to make. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of dedication. And I know it seems pretty obvious because these are things that we should already be doing, but we don't. As somebody who has struggled and has been on the other side, trust me, I know it's difficult. I know it's really hard to try to stay focused and on a last note that I can give you is unless you cannot, and I mean by all means, like you have restrictions where you cannot be in school, I highly suggest that you avoid taking asynchronous classes. The only time I think I would recommend taking like an asynchronous class is if you're really able to apply yourself because what happens is we think in our brain that we can take on that load but the reality of it is it takes more time, it takes more dedication out of your day and you have to schedule that. So you are reliable for your assignments. And I think this is kind of where my discipline kicked in because I realized that when I wasn't getting priority over, because let me just say this, I'm gonna put this out here. I was on academic probation and then I was put on disqualified status. Yeah, um, saying it now, it's not as embarrassing because I have shown a tremendous amount of growth and I have completely flipped just my path as a student. It just makes the biggest difference at the end of the day. So being on both sides, I can promise you if you're somebody that feels stuck, like you feel like you can't do it, like you've messed up, trust me, I have been there, I have done that and you can grow from this. Do not feel discouraged if you're in a time or place where you have taken years off of school or maybe you just feel lost or maybe you don't know what you're doing. You're not supposed to know what you want to do. If anything, if you're at a community college, just knock out your general education education and then start exploring with things you know I mean that's the best advice that I can give you because I literally was restricted so much to the point where I wasn't even able to get the good classes I would get whatever classes was left over and let me tell you it was not great it was either e an evening class which I couldn't attend because of my work schedule so I inevitably had to stick with the asynchronous classes which I knew I was going to struggle with because I need that I need that schedule I need that consistency but of course, at the end of the day, you can always ditch classes and things like that, which of course, it's really going to fall on you as a student. So if you want to have the best academic gear and you want to succeed and you want to change those, you know, C's and D's and maybe even F's in your classes to A's and B's, this is going to be the baby step way on how to do that. 
I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm super excited. I'm still debating whether I'm going to post that week because my birthday is actually on January 29th, which as you saw, I have been posting on Mondays regularly this year. I'm still debating whether I would like to post a video or not. But yes, other than that, if you guys enjoy this video, I highly suggest that you hit that like button. Of course, hit that subscribe button at the bottom. Check all of my other socials out at Madeline Rose Young. And if you feel like you're at a point where you do feel a little bit lost, I do have a podcast specifically. I have a podcast channel and my podcast is streaming on platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, and every other streaming platform like Alexa as well, which I just found out. It is at a mad life podcast and I do have an Instagram as well. Thank you for watching this video and good luck to you all on your academic school year. You got this. Love ya. Bye.